The spice extends life. The spice expands consciousness. The spice is vital to space travel. This is an extract from the 1984 science fiction film Dune, directed by David Lynch, and based on a book written by Frank Herbert. Science fiction has inspired scientists, makers and thinkers, informing technologies and ideas for the future. But is it the other way around? Some believe that writers, directors, storytellers are influenced by hidden realities, covert information, and science and technology that is suppressed from us all. Is there a substance in our known universe that is similar to the fictional spice? In 1975, David Hudson, a highly successful Arizona cotton farmer, discovered a material in his soil. If the material was laid out to dry in the sun, it exploded in a flash of light but the substance remained if dried without sunlight. Baffled by this discovery, he approached a professor at NY Cornell University. After extensive testing, he stated it carried numerous trace elements such as gold, silver, iron and aluminium. He isolated all the individual elements. Scientifically, there was nothing left, but 98% of the sample was still there. A strange unknown black matter remained. Hudson, undeterred, approached another academic based in Germany. Again, he uncovered irregularities. He discovered the substance contained platinum, erodium, iridium and osmium. The material reacted very differently to heat and cold. After 70 seconds of heat treatment, the substance recorded containing precious elements. 69 seconds before, it contained nothing. Further testing was continued at the University of Iowa. Warming and cooling altered the elements such as iron. They spontaneously disappeared or morphed into other elements. Current mainstream science dictates that reactions like this aren't technically possible. Transmutation of matter or alchemy is widely discredited as a pseudoscience. Its popular understanding is the process of converting base metals into gold. The church in medieval times used to persecute torture and kill alchemists for attempting to transmute material into gold. The legends say that the mystical substance Philosopher's Stone is the key to converting base metals into gold. David Hudson continued on with testing with Hal Puthoff, a theoretical physicist. He witnessed that directed warming rays of sunlight meant the material substance lost all material form. It was no longer subject to the laws of gravity. It became one with light, transferred to another dimension, dropping out of space-time. Upon cooling, the material would return back to this dimension. In March 1988, Hudson patented the white gold substance, Ormus, which stands for Orbitally Rearranged Monotonic Elements, or Ormes. It is constituted of 12 known elements which exist both in material and immaterial energy form. Hudson claims Ormus is found everywhere. It's in the air, the soil, plants and even the sea. It's the very spirit of life and nature itself. 5% of our brains and nervous systems contains Ormus. Hudson claims food harvested on the modern farming methods lack this sacred element. He states that Ormus, or white gold, makes us more spiritual, and even corrects imperfections in our DNA. Gold has always been true money, but is gold's true value actually medicinal and spiritual? There is evidence to support that white gold powder was known, its power harnessed in the ancient world. Hieroglyphics from ancient Egypt regularly reference a triangular motif. It's translated meaning coronal bread cakes. They were given ceremonially as offerings to pharaohs and their gods. Alternative historian Lawrence Gardner theorised that the bread was produced from a powder. It's literal translated meaning, what then is it? And is regularly found in Egyptian texts. For the Egyptians, it had a mystical, profound use. It was given to pharaohs as a rite of passage. After eating the cake, they would no longer be a man but would be transitioned into a god. Priests would also consume the cakes, granting them telepathic powers and the ability to see into the future. Spurred on by his findings, Hudson, via donations from the public, attempted to make Ormus available on the market under the guise of producing agricultural minerals. He claims the authorities inspected his plant and realised its use was more than just purely agricultural. Production was immediately shut down by the authorities. Shortly after, Hudson disappeared for many years with little or no contact. Then in 2011, he appeared in an almost conference, giving a two-hour lecture on the science of white gold powder. 
During the lecture, he went on to describe how an incredibly wealthy investor offered him all the money he needed to construct a new plant, along with a proper medical team for research. Hudson claims the investor was incredibly philanthropic and wanted to discover a cure for AIDS and cancer, specifically to help poorer countries in Africa. He stated he was unwilling to reveal the identity or nationality of the elusive benefactor. Well, there are rumours on the internet that it could be either Taiwan or China. Hudson went on to detail how white gold powder was successfully tested in hospitals, actually curing patients of all traces of cancer. The effect appears to speed up the body's immune system, which eventually eradicates cancer naturally. He advises we shouldn't view white gold powder as a type of medicine, but more as a transmuting material that has a holistic effect on the human body. Qi, a field around the body in Eastern principles, is profoundly revered and understood, but in Western culture it is not recognised. Almost responds to that field, it emits a field of its own, just like the human body. It's a pure life force and part of a living system. In the same 2011 lecture, he went on to describe that gold is the only material that acts as a superconductor at room temperature. Like the Egyptian pharaohs, if you took a large amount of white gold mixed with water after a long period of fasting, the gold would transform your entire bodily being into a superconductor. You would be transformed into a light being, one with knowledge, past and present, with a direct connection to the source field. There would be no reason to eat. White gold provides all the bodily needs, drawing substance from ambient energy fields. Human lifespans would stretch between 800 to 1,000 years. Hudson claims that during medical testing, large amounts of white gold has never been administered to patients. With mainstream scientific understanding, white gold in large doses would be lethal. He went on to describe his vision of white gold powder being available globally, but through standard scientific and academic institutions for the benefit of humanity. At the time, he was looking for further investors to realise a later stage. The elusive David Hudson again hasn't been seen or heard of since 2011. Has his research and discovery of white gold powder all been a ruse? Or are there actually covert groups working to prevent such a profound substance to be available to the public? Hudson seismically said the reasons gods and aliens came to Earth were specifically to mine white gold. So, is there an extraterrestrial paradigm to this story? Scientist, thinker and inventor Pete Peterson, who previously worked for covert military groups and is now one of David Wilcox's closest insiders, appeared on Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia. Peterson confirmed Hudson's comments that ETs have been interested in our planet due to its large abundance of white gold and its latent power to expand consciousness and a being's lifespan. Peterson theorises this is one of the main reasons for ET space exploration to locate and mine white gold, and a similar substance, manna. Wilcock claims Sumerian tablets also detail the Anunnaki came to Earth in order to steal our gold. Peterson even went on to say that humanity was specifically bred by the Anunnaki to work as gold miners. But are there others that could potentially confirm ET's understanding and extensive use of white gold? Alec Newell, a New Zealander who claims to have been abducted by extraterrestrials, February 1989, on what was supposed to be a three-hour drive from Rotura to Auckland. During the drive, Newell disappeared for a period of 10 days. Upon arrival into Auckland, he had no recollection of where he had been. Later, he started to experience vivid dreams of those lost 10 days. With the help of hypnotherapy, he delved deep into his subconscious to unravel the puzzle. He discovered he had been abducted and spent 10 days with benevolent extraterrestrials. During this time, they travelled to and from the ET's home. He participated in their day-to-day -day activities, learned about their lifestyle, technology and even their history. He was told that these beings had a very special relationship with humanity in the past, present and even the future. Ewell described the beings as being smaller than us, but living significantly longer. They didn't eat food but existed on a mixture of white gold and herbs taken on a monthly basis. He claims the white gold is instrumental to their technology due to its interdimensional capabilities. White gold was woven into the fabric of their suits and even their craft. Their telepathic abilities between each other and the craft was unified through the use of white gold. The spice extends life. The spice 
expands consciousness. The spice is vital to space travel.